Praise the Lord. Amen. What a wonderful day. God is blessing us today. Amen. His blessings are just amazing how that he just pours out on us. I thank God for the breath I breathe. I thank God for the food I ate today. I thank God for the clothes that I have. Hey, man, I thank God that we're getting to spend time on the TV with these people. Amen. And so we've been talking about unity. And uh, Christy has delivered a couple of messages today. I'm going to minister on unity. Amen. And uh, so what exactly uh, have you got to say on unity right now? <laughs> I think I said it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Well, I know that um, in doing the church work, unity is so powerful. Uh, you know, I, I deal with a lot of pastors, and a lot of my deal is to help the pastors to know that their people are on board with them when they decide to go into a project. Like, we're going to go into a building project. Well, do your people want to go into a building project? You know, because church is not just you, amen? It's, it's the whole people, amen? And uh, you, have, you have different concepts of outreach and mm -hmm. things that we're going to do for outreach. Does the church want to do this outreach? And we know? talk about perspectives. Everybody has a different perspective. And you, I welcome perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, it may or may not change how I think, but I welcome perspective. If somebody has a different way, sometimes if I'm really uh, struggling with something, I'll call several people that I can trust and I'll say, Give me a different perspective. Let me see this so that I can uh, have a whole view or at least. I call that the council of the God. Yeah, that's the you council. You know, we, that we it's do. good for us to have government and fathers and mothers to us, but it's also good to have a council of the godly yeah. that maybe they've experienced a lot more yeah. altogether and we're able to call upon them and ask them. It's important that we connect with people that have experienced life in the ministry, our life in God, our life in family, mm -hmm. that are doing good at what they're doing. It's good to to, yeah. to let them rub off on us, amen? Yeah. I, I, do. I, I don't always look for them to, get, to, uh, mm. to uh, put a stamp of approval on what I'm thinking. I'm not looking for that. I'm actually looking for exactly that, a different perspective. I, I know several times that I've, had some thought lines and I'd call somebody and say, what do you think about this? How, what, what's, what would be how you would see this? And it's really been beneficial to me. I've not always went with what they've said, but I have thought, wow, okay. You know, and it, it gives me a different way to look at it. And it's, it, it, it makes the, um, it makes the church flow together better. You know, we're making disciples. That's what we're doing. And we're, we've got years and years of experience in the ministry of training people up and equipping them to do the work of ministry. Also, just training people up to do everyday life. And what we're trying to teach is the practical of how to do everyday life. And this unity thing is huge. Uh, being able to connect with people, being able to allow people to speak into your life, uh, not being a know-it-all is a big deal. Yeah, it's you, know? It's being uh, you know, as a pastor, you get a vision and, and you present it and you want your people to get all excited with you. If they don't get all excited with you, please, pastor, put your vision on the back burner and say, God, give me something I can do today, you know, and uh, let a seed of that get into them until they're ready to go with it. And uh, you don't have to shove it down their throats or make it happen. I, I know a minister that decided that he would sell the church and move to another place and build a big building. Well, he sold a church that had been there for over 30 years. He built a wonderful place, but nobody came. <laughs> it was like, no, my church is over here. And they, he, they sold the church to another group of people, and so they couldn't even go to their church. And they were hurt and offended. But the pastor was able to do what he wanted to do, which was to build a church in another area 
and, and to have a lot of land to do a lot of outreach and things that they wanted to do uh, in the community. Uh, but the the people weren't on board with no, it. I think and, people, I think what people a lot of times do is they look for people that say yes to everything and so that they don't ever have to humble themselves and be able to flow with people. If you're not under authority or you're not able to be influenced by authority, then you probably uh, don't need to be in leadership. You know, well, the, I guess the key is is being able to have people that can disagree with you without acting like you're the devil if you disagree with them, yeah, you know? You got to have people that are mature and people that have wisdom right. that will sow their seed into you and not condemn you if you don't take it, you oh, know? That's right. that's uh, right. I tell people, you know, when it comes to prophecy, if you have a word from the Lord for somebody, deliver the package and walk away. It's not your word, it's their word. They get to deal with it, they get to decide. Don't judge them as to whether they do it today or tomorrow or next day. Sometimes that word will come past 10 years from now, 15 years from now. And so learning the wisdom of operating with God, I don't know how many of y'all have prayed and you're expecting God to do something now and he shows up uh, four days late and he's still on time, you know. And, and it just seems that God is not as in a big a hurry as we are. <laughs> And so uh, being in unity with people, coming into agreement, takes time. Oh, it takes effort. You've got to get to know each other. You, you know, uh, one of the things I did with one of the elders at our church one time, this is back 30 years ago when I was pastor of another church, I took them all bowling. And they went out bowling and bowling, and, you know, you got the pins and the ball. And, and uh and you know what I did? I had them bowl, and we found out who was competitive, who had attitudes. <laughs> uh, we found out who uh, had to win no matter what. Uh, we, I mean, who's a sore loser? <laughs> yeah, and, and by finding those things, it helped us to relate to each other and deal with each other, mm -hmm. and uh, and realize, hey man, I'm I'm a human. I'm, yeah. I may be a son of God. I may be a born again child of God and I may be a mature Christian but I still have some weaknesses and you can find that out while you're playing games <laughs> believe me and uh, so then we we rented out a pontoon boat and we went out on pontoon boat and, and sat on in and grilled food and all that it was a great day a great day of fellowship but you do things to build unity uh, if you were building a church, you'd want to build unity amongst your leadership. You'd want your leaders to know each other and be for each other and be able to speak the truth and love to each right. other. That's Amen. Right. That's right. And uh, um, in the home, you've got the same situation. You've got a husband, a wife, and children. And if that husband and wife is not in agreement and unity, the children will play you against each other until you're ready to divorce your mate and you don't want to get there. You don't want to go there. You, so you want to work together on the team. The home team is the husband and wife. And so you got to spend a little time together. You got to talk with each other and, uh, you know, go out and eat and go play a game or two, get with some friends and, and relate to them. But the thing is, you got to, You've got to talk things out and, and, and come into agreement on things so that your whole family can be in unity, not one manipulating another. Yeah, and I think a word that I want to say is value. they got to feel valued. Yeah. Everybody needs to feel valued. Well, and, and that, that is true. Everybody is looking uh, to be um, vind uh, what is not vindicated. That's a bad word uh, for this. It's a... Uh, Validated. Validated. Thank <laughs> you for the word. Yes, validated. There's a validation process in the body of Christ that causes us to excel. Anyway, we're going to the next segment of our program. I'm going to be teaching on unity. Uh, join with us through the commercial. Amen. God is always speaking.
God desires a relationship with you. Get your free ebook today. Well, praise the Lord. Hey, Amen. We're back, and, and I want to share a word with you out of Ephesians chapter 4. I believe that Ephesians chapter 4 is God's way of us growing up. If you're going to grow up in the Lord, if you're going to be mature in the Lord, it's going to require that you connect with people. Amen? God has called us to connect to people. And uh, I know that there are some people that I spoke to through the years and they'd say, well, I just get all my gospel off the TV. Well, thank God we're on TV too. But uh, being a minister, I know you can't grow unless you have other people to try it out on. <laughs> Amen. For instance, we teach love that passes knowledge. You won't learn how to love past knowledge until you have connected to people and, and been involved with people. And so the scripture I will read to you is in the, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and, and it's talking about Jesus after he, uh, he descended and then he ascended and he led everybody out of the bosom of Abraham into heaven, it says, And he himself gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So it was for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's why these gifts have been given. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. And so God is wanting us to come into unity in our faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. And this is so important. To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's called growing up. <laughs> when you grow up, you come into that place that you know who Jesus is and you are walking perfect, perfect before God. You remember he told Abraham, be thou perfect and walk before me. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Uh, we find out in the word of God that our perfection is made through obedience. Mm -hmm. By obedience, we're made perfect unto God. And that's Hebrews chapter 6 and 7. You can read in that. And so he says that when we grow up under five ministers, not under one minister, but we have an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, and they're all sowing in their life. And all of them have a different message, and all of them have a different thought life because these mantles affect their thought life. For instance, an apostle is a father to the Timothys. He's not a good person to minister to the body on a regular person, but he can train up the people that do minister to the body, and, and that's a powerful thing. A prophet is a seer, and he just wants everybody to hear from God and see what God is doing and hear what God is saying, and it's all about relationship with the prophet. Amen? And then you have the evangelist. They just want to get you saved. And if you are saved, they won't know why you're not going out and getting others saved. Amen. It's all about evangelism. And then the teacher comes and he teaches all through the word. And, they, you know, if you go to the hospital, they say, well, if it had been in the word, he wouldn't have been sick like that. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's different aspects of teaching that people have. And they're really extreme. Amen. And you can be taught in so many areas through the Word of God. And a teacher causes you to be well balanced in your faith. Amen. Because it causes you to believe God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the more of the Word you digest, the more you have opportunity to hear from God in that. 
and it's so powerful. But then you have a pastor, and the pastor is the one that gathers the sheep and wants the sheep to stay close because they don't want them getting hurt. Uh, they're not evangelistic. An evangelist wants to get all them sheep unsettled and get them out there where they're ministering. And the pastor says, no, you get hurt out there. You need to stay. Uh, they work against each other to a degree, but they're all a gift to the body to put apart in each of us the things that we need, amen? I need a, uh, an apostle. I need a father into my life. I need somebody to train me up and help equip me. I also need a prophet. I need somebody that can see and hear from God around me, amen, and that stirs me to see and hear from God. I need the evangelist because I need to be so conscious. I want to see people saved. Every program we have, we pray a prayer of salvation with everybody on the program because we want people saved amen and and we want you to know that you need to win people to the lord you need to win jesus that is the message of the evangelist and and so these messages come out into the body and each one is like a layer of jesus it, it gives us a layer of who jesus is and we get a full picture, and when we're in agreement with God, then we begin to take on the fullness of the statue of Christ, and we begin to operate the way Jesus did. And in order for these gifts to work together, they have to love past knowledge because they don't even agree with each other's approach on the gospel, amen? And so this is important, uh, the, the unity deal. Because he said, I want you to come into the unity of the faith. Amen. I want to read some more. He said that we would no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and cunning craftiness by which they lie and wait to deceive. Can you believe that there's people out there that want to deceive you? There's people out there that actually will take you down a wrong path and, and have you working yourself half to death to be saved, or they will have you doing things that are not scriptural. Uh, they will have you worshiping them and taking care of them totally and not, not in the right perspective and order. Uh, you need to be around people that love Jesus, that's growing in Jesus, and you need to be around the mature gifts, and, and, and we need to pray for the pastors to allow those mature gifts to come up and come up around them to visit the church and preach and sow into the congregation so that we can all grow up. Y'all, we're not supposed to be just a group of people that gather in a barn and just sat there saying when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be we're supposed to grow up and we're supposed to have the ministry of jesus he's the head of the body amen and so he's working in our life and we want that to happen glory to god now listen to what he says um hallelujah he says but speaking the truth and love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of, who is the head of Christ. So I've got to learn to be around people and speak the truth in love. That means I may disagree with something you're doing, and I've got to be, uh, if I'm in a relationship with you and you know I love you, then I can speak the truth to you in love. If I'm not in relationship, if I'm out of fellowship, and I just come walk in and see something and declare it to you, uh, you're more apt to do what every other flesh person would do. Who are they? Who are they to say this to me? Who are they to think, you know, who are they to be advising me? Uh, that's the key for relationship. My mother and father could correct me and discipline me because they was my mother and father. They was involved in me eating. They was involved in me going to school. They was involved in everything going on with me. Well, in the church, we're supposed to connect with each other in like manner. And there's lots of mamas out there. There's lots of daddies out there in, in the body of Christ. And we connect. And when we connect, when we start going off track, they will speak the truth and love to us. And what happens when they speak the truth and love, it says, of whom the whole body joined and knit together by whatever joint supplies, 
according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body to the edifying of itself in love. And so we grow and we are edified and it is in love. Amen. And so when we're in the church and we're in the family, this is not a mean thing. I'm going to Hey, I'm going to teach them something. I'm going to tell on them. I'm going to get everybody mad at them. Uh, no, that's not love. This thing is love. That love covers all sin. Love doesn't cover a multitude of sins. That's what it says in one place. But another place it says love covers all sin. I am not eager to expose where you're wrong. I'm not eager for you to expose where I'm wrong. But I do want you to love me and speak the truth in love. And I want you to give me a clue of how to do something right that I am doing wrong. Amen. And that is where unity plays in. And so you have this happen in home Bible studies where they're fellowshipping and praying with each other and there's open discussion. You have it in Sunday school classes in church where the Sunday school people talk and, and they go over scripture together, amen, and things like that. Uh, you, you have it when the body of Christ comes to church. It's a little more... A forum of somebody ministering to you and you not actually communicating with the body, but it is necessary for the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher to move in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we need to come together in unity and we need to grow up. And if you're not in unity with the body, you will not grow up. You will be blessed and receive the blessing of God as you fellowship with the body. God bless you. Uh, join us the next segment. We're praying for you. Jesus, when they lowered the man down in the bed in the home, the power of God was present to heal them all, but only that man got healed. Everybody there could have gotten healed. Don't let one person get your blessing. <laughs> you need to get it all for you too, amen? Let God heal you. It's like a prayer line where somebody comes in line and says, hey, can you pray for my mama? Can you pray for my daddy? And I'm saying, well, what do you need? <laughs> Come on. And we need to receive prayer for ourselves. And so we're going to pray in the power of the Holy Ghost. But the first prayer we're going to pray is a prayer of salvation. And Christy, I'll pray the prayer okay. and you just repeat it after me. And good. then we're going to start moving in God and letting God heal people. Amen. Deliver people. Set you free in the name of Jesus. If you've never received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, or you're not comfortable with knowing that you were saved, then pray this prayer with us. I believe God's drawing you. You wouldn't be here. Amen. And so we're going to pray this prayer and, and let's just do it. Say, Father God, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus, I believe, I believe that Jesus is your son. That Jesus is your son. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He lived a life of example. He lived a life of example. For me to follow. For me to follow. He hung on a tree. 
tree. He hung on a tree. On Calvary's cross. On Calvary's cross. And shed his blood. He shed his blood. To remove my sin. To remove my sin. He sins. redeemed me from a curse. He redeemed me from a curse. God, they laid him in a borrowed tomb. God, they laid him in a borrowed tomb. And three days later, you raised him from the dead. Three days later, you raised him from the I dead. I believe that with my heart. I believe that with my heart. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. And I say, Jesus. And I say, Jesus. Be Lord of my life. Be Lord of my life. Save me now. Save me now. Wash me in the blood. Wash me in the blood. Make me a new creature. Make me a new creature. Clean my slate. Clean my slate. Make me whole. Make me whole. Let me fellowship God. Let me fellowship in God. Jesus in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, I've got to pray this with you. Pray this. Jesus has a baptism. I want to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I need your baptism. I need your baptism. It's the promise of the Father. It is the promise of the Holy Father. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in me. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in me. Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Manifest in my life. Manifest in my in life. In power. In power. Manifest as a comfort. Manifest as a comfort. As a teacher. As a teacher. And let me have tongues of fire. Let me have tongues of fire. Let me pray in the spirit. Let me pray in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, I believe that you just prayed that and the Holy Spirit is there. Amen. You may not have your prayer language because we didn't really give time for that. But in a minute, you can just... Be when you feel the Holy Spirit come up on you, if you just take a deep breath in and begin to speak, you will speak in tongues and there'll be a fluent language come to your mouth. And it's that simple, it's not complicated, amen. You just don't know how to talk out of your stomach, so you're learning how to do yeah. it. You just go, yes. And the language just come and it'll just flow out of you. And you pray the perfect will of God with that language in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Christy. I'm, I'm telling you, God is healing people. It's in the spirit. Amen. He wants to heal people right now. And uh, I'm taking authority over arthritis. Mm -hmm. It's like in joints all over your body, mm -hmm. different ones in your back, in your arms, in your elbows, in your fingers, in your toes, in your feet. I break the power of arthritis mm -hmm. and I command it to go. God is showing me that he's healing arthritis right now. In the name of Jesus, just move around and check yourself. The pain should leave, the crackling should go. You're being made whole in your joints in the name of Jesus, your bones are being healed in the name of Jesus. The thing called bone spurs, like calcium deposits that come up on your bones and, and they hurt. In the name of Jesus, God is removing the bone spurs in Jesus' name. Amen. He's doing it right now. And you can check yourself. And if it was on your feet, it was on your, yeah, it's it's not there. It's not causing any more problem. Go ahead, Christy. Tony, somebody on their right uh, side of their back is got pain right on the right side um, uh, down right under your shoulder blade there's pain and God says I'm going to heal that right now in Jesus name we command that to go pain go in Jesus name thank you Lord and 